It's not too often in nature we see a mountain on its own. Well, unless it's guarded by a treasure hoarding dragon. Usually mountains cluster together, forming huge chains of mountains that can cross entire countries or even continents. We call these mountain ranges, and yes, while individual mountains have names, so do mountain ranges. So how did we name some of these masses of mountains? And one of these days, we will look into how just mountains got their names. The mountain range with the highest peak is of course the Himalayas, which span a huge chunk of Asia, including including Nepal, India, China, Pakistan and Bhutan. Despite there being hundreds of languages being spoken across the Himalayas, the name itself comes from the Sanskrit language. It's actually a compound of two Sanskrit words, Hima and Alaya, which means snow and abode respectively. So the name means abode of snow, most likely named by the residents who made their home in these snowy peaks. Despite the Himalayas being the highest mountains, they are not the longest mountain range. The title of longest mountain range goes to the Andes in South America, which through Argentina, Chile, Peru, Bolivia, Ecuador, Colombia and Venezuela as if it were the backbone of South America. There seems to be some debate as to where the name comes from. I found a couple possible etymologies, both coming from the Quechua language of South America, one of these being that it comes from their word anti meaning east, which to me is a little bit odd as looking at a map of South America you will see that the Andes on the west side of the continent. However, it might make more sense as a map of the Quechua language shows us that the language too is very western, so the speakers of it the Andes would be in the east. The other theory is that comes from their word Andi meaning high crest, which too makes sense as the mountains are like high crests. In Europe we have the Alps that span across France, Switzerland, Italy, Germany, Austria and Slovenia. What's interesting is that it seems the word Alps existed before it was used as a name for these mountains. It's thought this name comes from the Latin Alibus which means white, which would make sense as these mountains are rather white with snow atop them. What's interesting about the Alps too is that they've become so renowned that an adjective has been made out of their name, Alpine. If you describe something as being Alpine, it means it relates to the Alps. What I found interesting is that while these Alps span Europe, the Alps also reside in Japan too. That's right, the Alps actually stretch across Europe, Asia, across the sea and end in Japan. Okay, not really, but you will find the Japanese Alps in Japan, a different mountain range with the same name. In fact, the Japanese Alps is a name for a series of mountain ranges across the main island of Japan, Honshu. The reason these mountains share their name with a range in Europe is because they were coined by an Englishman by the name of William Gowland, a miner who went to Japan to help modern the country. He named these mountains the Alps as they reminded him of the Alps in Europe, and from being there myself I can understand why. Humble brag aside, while it was Gowland who coined the name, it will be popularised later in the 1800s by Walter Weston, another Englishman who went to Japan as a missionary, but will go on to popularise mountain climbing in Japan. He was so influential to this area of Japan that an annual festival in these lands still bear his name, the Western Festival. It seems weird that these Englishmen would name these mountains after a range in Europe and not in their home nation. And while we have a fair few things here in England, mountains aren't really our strongest point. We do have some mountains however, and a lot of hills. The most notable mountain and hill range here in England is the Pennines in Northern England. It's thought that this name may come from the Celtic word for hill, though the earliest recordings of this name come from the 18th century, way after the Celts were ruling these lands. Now looking at mountain ranges, many words may come to mind, things like incredible, amazing or even remarkable. However, only one range are named after being remarkable. That of course being the Remarkables in New Zealand. This name was given to these mountains by Alexander Garvey as the Remarkables are one of the only two mountain ranges on the entire planet that run directly north to south, which is something quite remarkable indeed. Finally, we have the Rocky Mountains across the US and Canada. Now, this name might seem pretty obvious, mountains are rocky, but is there any deeper meaning to this? Well, no, they weren't secretly named after someone called Rocky. The name derives from the Cree language name Asinwati, meaning seen from the east across the prairie. They appear as a rocky mass. So while it's not too interesting, I find it fun that the word rocky was initially the adjective form of rock, which has now become a noun. So it's a derivation of the noun rock to turn it into the adjective of rocky, and then thanks to conversion, the adjective rocky has become a noun unto itself, which for the linguistically inclined like myself is pretty fun. The Rocky Mountains were suggested by Grey Computer, and thanks to their suggestion, they will now be honoured as Name Explains patron saint of the Rocky Mountains. Do you have a good idea for somewhere that's name could be covered in a Name Explained video? If so, then please consider donating on Patreon. Just $1 a month helps keep the channel running and earns you a weekly chance to suggest somewhere to be turned into a video, and you too could be a Name Explained Patreon saint. 
thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Name Explain depends on small monthly donations from fans like you to help keep the channel running. Just the small amount of $2 a month helps in a huge way, grants you patron exclusive Name Explain extras, and gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you.